Hello friends, this video on probability part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. In this chapter, we will actually study the empirical or statistical or experimental. All these three words mean same. We will study these approach to the probability. So when I say experimental approach or the empirical approach or statistical approach, in this case we actually perform experiments. And based on the experimental data, we find the probability. For example, let's find the probability of getting a head if I toss a coin. So if I toss a coin, I will either get head or tail. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll do I'll perform this experiment maybe a thousand times. So I perform this experiment thousand times. So in this thousand times, I may get let's suppose four ninety head and five hundred ten tail. Correct. So in that case, we can actually find that the probability of head is total number of head by total number of observation. Probability of tail is five hundred ten by total number of observation. So we will talk about the formulas, but. What I am trying to say is in this whole chapter, we will talk about the experimental approach to probability. Right? We will actually perform the experiment and that is why it is called experimental approach. It is also called statistical, I will show you because we will see that some problems which we have solved in the statistics, we will use the same problems to find out the probability. So when the data is huge, for example, if you are performing these experiments 1000 times, 2000 times, you need statistical tool to represent data and that's why it is also called statistical approach to probability right and why tell you why why do we need to perform this experiment so many times so for example if i want to find the same case uh, the probability of getting a head or a tail so if we perform this experiment only let's suppose two times and what if in both the two times I get two head, then the probability of tail comes out to be zero, and probability of head comes out to be two by two. That is one, and that is not a correct data, right? So, so in the case of experimental approach or two probability, it is always required that the data should be large enough. So the data is small you will not get the accurate results okay why because if you have a huge data then you will rule out the corner cases so in this case the example i uh, showed you sometimes it may happen that if you take a very small set of data you have a corner case where in this case you get got both time head and zero time state so typically you toss this coin thousand times two thousand times and stuff like that right so see as i told these kids are actually performing experiments and that is nothing but the experimental approach to probability this kid is trying to find the probability of uh, getting a green ball if he plucks or if you if you draw one ball from this jar it has a ball with different colors he's just trying to find the probability of getting the green ball okay if these concepts are not very clear to you just hold on for some time we'll talk about these concepts right it is all empirical or experimental approach to probability just understand probability is uh, nothing but you have to tell what is the possibility of an uh, event okay, we will talk about these terms event possibility and stuff like that but in this case we will not use any big shots formula to find that we will just perform experiment and based on the experimental data we will find the uh, probability so the question that comes to our mind is why shall we study probability before even going to the chat? See probability is used in a lot of fields in day to day life. For example, weather forecasting depends a lot on probability. Weather forecasting, you will see that probability is used a lot. If you see the whole gambling industry, the casino, it runs on probability. The manufacturing industry also use probability to uh, tell what is the warranty they can give for the products or how much products they have to uh, make 
example, the car industry, uh, the tire industry, the battery industry, all the industries actually, uh, any product which has an age, after that, it will die. See, if you buy a tire, it is not guaranteed that this tire will last only for 100 days. Right? Some tire lasts for more days, some tire lasts for less days. Correct. So, based on that, based on the statistical analysis, company come up with a probability and they get the data how much cost to manufacture. The insurance company, the premium which you pay, that is actually calculated based on the probability on the past data. Right? So, in the field of commerce, stock market, the profit of a company, the loss of a company, everything is governed by probability. In fact, in the field of biological science, medical science, probability is used a lot. When you create a new medicine, then they find out what is the probability that it will work. For example, the same medicine, when it is tried, uh, tested on 100 scapegoat, and 90 it may work, 10 it may not work. So then based on that, they come up with various data. Okay? So, probability is used in lot of fields in day-to-day -day life. And very interesting topic, so if you understand it, this topic it is pretty easy. If you don't understand, viability is actually a nightmare. So please pay attention to this chapter. So let's define the probability. What is probability? See, probability is nothing but it is a measure of uncertainty of various phenomena and that is numerical. So you see, probability is nothing but measure of uncertainty of various phenomena. And that is a numerical representation of that uncertainty. See, we talk about uncertainty, right? You say, for example, this guy is saying, I will, it will rain probably. He is saying that the chances are high that the match will be drawn. The girl is telling, I doubt I'll pass the exam. The girl is thinking, most probably, the dad will give me watch. So, if you see this statement, I doubt most probably it will probably rain chances are high so all these statements talk about uncertainty right because this boy is not 100 percent sure that it will rain this girl is not 100 percent sure that the dad will gift her watch this girl is not 100 percent sure that she will pass the exam this boy is not 100 percent sure that the match should be dropped. So there is a chance. So maybe she is 90% sure that the dad the dad will her dad will give her watch. She is maybe 40% sure that she will pass the exam. Uh, based on the status in the report from the weather forecasting team, it is said that maybe it is 80% uh, surety that it will rain today. And for the draw, maybe it is 70%. Uh, so if you see, I have given some percentage values here. Because it is not concrete, right? So, so we use now probability to measure this uncertainty, and we give some numbers. And this number is typically in the range of zero to one. It is not in the percentage. It is in the range of zero to one. So, if it is zero, that means it is an impossible event. It will not happen. For example, if I say that I will not eat today, that means you are very sure you will not eat. So, the probability of Event saying that I will eat today is zero because you will not eat. And if you say it is 100% sure that you will pass the exam, right, because uh, you have attempted all the questions, then you will say that the probability of me passing the exam is 1. That is, you are 100% sure that you will pass the exam. Correct. So, zero is an impossible event. One, for example, if your exam is, has gone really bad, you have not attempted even a single question. Then you can say that the probability of me passing the exam is zero. That means you are sure that it will not pass the exam. So the range is from zero to one. We will talk about that, right? And typically there are three approaches to probability. One is the empirical or statistical or the experimental approach, wherein we actually perform the experiment. We observe the data, we collect data, and based on that we come up with the probability data figure, right? This is what we will study in this chapter. The next is the classical and the axiomatic approach. So we will not talk about these approach, we will uh, study these in the higher classes uh, where we uh, use a lot of formulas to come up with uh, different uh, probability. So these two, the classical and the axiomatic approach are pretty 
uh, complicated. So we'll not study these in this class. In this class, we'll study the empirical or the statistical or the experimental approach. All these three things, same, right? And we will study is that the probability is, de is denoted by p, and this is nothing but number of favorable outcome. divide by total number of so this is the formula of uh, probability number of favorable outcome divide by total number of outcome so we will talk about this formula in detail so for example we talk about uh, tossing a coin so you toss the coin 10 times out of 10 times let's suppose you got uh, 6 times head and 4 times tail then you can say that the probability of getting a head is nothing but number of favorable outcome is in this case 6, total outcome is 10. Similarly, probability of getting a tail is nothing, nothing but probability of uh, the number of favorable outcome is 4 tail by total outcome it is 10. So you can just say that this 6 by 10 or 4 by 10. So we will touch these formulas later, but just understand that probability is nothing but the measure of uncertainty of various phenomena and it is used to represent that numerically and this numerical value is typically between 0 to 1. If it is 0, it means it is an impossible event. If it is 1, that means it is a certain event. It will happen for sure shot. Okay. And you talk about the probability statement, for example, you see doubt, most probably, probably, chance and these uh, words are used to show that the, the statement which I am talking about is not concrete. Okay. Let's briefly touch upon the history of probability before starting the chapter. See, it actually started with the gambling. Right? So there was a gambler in 1654, there was a gambler. He approached a well-known French philosopher and mathematician, Blaise Pascal. So he approached uh, Pascal and he told that uh, I have some doubts and problems regarding dice. Remember this dice? So he had some doubts regarding the dice. When you throw dice a couple of times, you get different values. So he had some problems on the dice. And he discussed with Pascal. Pascal became interested in his problems. And then he also discussed the same problem with another French mathematician. His name was Pierre de Fermat. And both these guys looked into these problems. And they looked into these problems independently and they solved it. And this gave birth to the probability. So the whole probability concept was started with gambling. But now it is used in a lot of uh, fields. As I told you, it is used in the insurance sector, it is used in the manufacturing sector, physical science, commerce, medical science, weather forecasting, a lot of places the probability is used now. Okay. So let's talk about the whole probability concept. In fact, the same formula which I discussed uh, just now. The probability of any event is nothing but the number of trials in which the event happened by total number of trials. So if you don't know event, what is event, just hold on, we'll discuss what is event. So let's take some examples. Let's take some examples where uh, we have to find that. For example, tossing a coin, you toss a coin five times and you want to know what is the probability of getting hit or throwing a die or plucking one ball from a jar which has multiple balls all different colors so many examples right for example probability of uh, let's take the same example of head nothing but number of trials the head happened by total number of trials so let's suppose we have performed the experiment thousand times out of that you get 500 times head and 500 times tail so we can say that probability of head is nothing but 500 that is the total number of trials when head came and by total number of trials that is 1000 that is 1 by Let's take some numericals to understand this concept as well. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot.